everybody. Hey. It's kind of hard for me to talk about, but I just want to let you guys know I've been clean and sober now for 18 years. Thank you. You know, it's a struggle, but I take it day by day. Um, you know, it always bugs me when someone's like, yeah, I've been clean and sober now for 162 days. People are like, good for you, man. Way to stay out the bottle. God bless you. Keep it up. Then with me, they're like, wait a minute. So you've never smoked a cigarette? You've never taken a sip of alcohol? Oh my God, what a homo. <laughs> now, a lot of people ain't drink. I was talking to this girl. She's like, I got so wasted last night. Oh yeah, what'd you do? Oh, I had four beers, three shots of vodka, half a bottle of Southern Comfort and a wine cooler, all in an hour. And I'm like, geez, I can't even drink that much water. <laughs> I know when I turn 21, all my friends are gonna be like, dude, Taylor, let's go to a bar, let's go drink. I don't wanna go to a bar, unless there was a bar for non-drinkers, how are you pretty cool? Be like, hey, bartender, can you give me a shot of orange juice? <laughs> Actually, I'm having a pretty bad day. Uh, why do you make it extra pulp? <laughs> but you know, there'll always be that one guy trying to ruin the good time for everybody. You're sitting at the bar minding your own business, then you look down in your glass and you're like, hey, wait a minute, someone put a Flintstones vitamin in my Yoo-Hoo. <laughs> A lot of people may just do drugs, too. <laughs> Have you seen those commercials where they say if you buy drugs, you support terrorism? I know a guy who funds Al-Qaeda about three, four times a day. <laughs> yeah, the problem with him is I can't really carry on a conversation with him because I'm not hip with the whole drug vocabulary terminology. He came up to me the other day. I have no idea what he's talking about. He's like, dude, Taylor, I just dropped some acid. I'm like, geez, that's going to leave a stain on the carpet. <laughs> What else did you do? Oh, I took some meth last year. Oh yeah, who was your teacher? <laughs> you know, teenagers, I really don't understand it. We, we do things that could potentially ruin our lives, you know? I went to the liquor store, I saw a 16 year old kid using a fake ID. 16 years old and he's buying beer and cigarettes. Man, if I was 16 and had a fake ID, I'd probably go vote. That's what I would do. <laughs> teenagers, I'll tell you, teenagers. God love the way teenagers talk. Have you noticed everything's gay? Dude, you still watch wrestling? That's so gay. You went shopping with your mom? That's so gay. Everything's gay, 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 gay. I mean, can't these kids come up with a more mature way to speak? Maybe grab a thesaurus and find a better way to use the English vocabulary. The way they talk, it's just so retarded. <laughs> retarded. And the way you dress too, you know, the guys trying to be punk rockers, like I'm a punk rocker, you know, and got their hair spiked six feet in the air and all these rings in their face, and they all smell like shampoo without the sham. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, kind of guy who spilled soda on him and threw in the mud. He'd be like, man, now I'm going to have to take a shower this month. And the way these girls dress, too, they're poor fathers. You got these 12, 13-year-old girls walking around with their tiny little shorts on, their small little tops, showing off they don't even have yet. You know, wearing less clothes than the baby in their arms. It's... It's so sad, man. In the shorts, they say things on them like, juicy and squeeze me. And I'm wondering, does she have some nectarines under there? I could sure go for a nectarine right about now. But alas, there are no nectarines. It's just her butt. So I was thinking, hey, maybe her shorts say something else on them. Like maybe, uh, hey, stop staring at my ass, you pedophile. Or if that didn't fit, something more simple like jailbait or exit only. <laughs> and on my way here, I saw a lady driving a car with a bumper sticker on it. It said, there's no excuse for domestic violence. I agree, there's no excuse. Until her husband finds out there's a bumper sticker on his brand new Mercedes. <laughs> that is an excuse for domestic violence. I was talking to a girl who works at Jamba Juice in Hollywood. She's telling me all the celebrities that came in. She said Denzel Washington was in another day and he was a real jerk. But I told her, you know what they say, don't judge a man by the way he orders a mango go-go smoothie. <laughs> hey, 
I don't say it, they say it, okay? Yeah. Um, I heard, I was watching the news, I heard there's a serial rapist on the loose in Los Angeles. Isn't that horrible, a serial rapist? I just can't imagine how someone can become a serial rapist. They tell themselves that it's okay. It's okay to take advantage of young, innocent, bowls of cinnamon toast crunch. It's so sad. What is this world coming to? I just want to apologize. Uh, I left my charisma my home again. I put it down to get a sandwich. Sigh. I was talking to a lady before the show. She was like, excuse me, sir, look in your face. You have an eyelash on your face. One of your eyelashes fell out. Blow and make a wish. Um, I wish my eyelashes wouldn't fall out. I was talking to my buddies. He's like, you know what? Every occupation has a derogatory term for it, so you can call the person a bad name and make them feel bad about themselves and for having their job. For example, a lawyer, you say, oh, lawyers are the devil. Or cops, cops are pigs. And he says, well, what about a garbage man? And what could he call a garbage man to make him feel bad about himself? I'm like, um, why don't you just call him a garbage man? <laughs> that should take care of it. I graduated from high school in Del Mar, California. There was a lot of diversity at my school. It was great. We had rich white people, rich black people, rich Asians, rich Mexicans. It's a melting pot, you know? It's what America was founded on. <laughs> and at my school, there's a club for almost every single race. There's even an Asian awareness club. Asian awareness club, is that really necessary? It's like I'm not aware that there's Asians at my school when I trip over them while they're breakdancing in the hallway trying to get to English class. Or whenever a teacher would say, all right, students, last week's test was graded on the curve, we all come from the class and say, eh, thanks a lot, Zhang Yi. <laughs> you know what race did not have a club? Caucasians. Are there any white people out there tonight? <laughs> Representing. <laughs> I was thinking, hey, maybe we should get together and start a club and teach people who we really are, you know? Who the white man be? That'd be great. We called the White Boys Culture Club. We could hang out and talk about golf, uh, listen to Limp Bizkit CDs, have a pog tournament. What are pogs? pogs. Yeah, I like talking about being white, but if I can be serious for a second, I have to say, it's tough being white in America. Am I right, ladies? It's true. I can't do anything or go anywhere without the color of my skin affecting my day-to-day -day life. I was driving the other day and I got pulled over. Okay, I went through a red light, but that's not why I got a ticket. You know why I got a ticket? DWW, driving while white. It's true, I'm telling you. And I can't do anything without the color of my skin being a factor. I, I can't ride the bus anymore because they always make me sit at the front. Hey, bus driver, I'm going to sit in the back. You sit in the front. Fine, I'll walk. I'll start a march. I can't go shopping anymore, shopping. I went to the market, I got my Entertainment Weekly magazine, I them at the counter, ready to go. There's no one behind the register. There's no employees anywhere to be seen. What the hell is going on, you know? But I'm not gonna let them get me, okay? So I started looking through this door, up and down, all through the aisles. Finally, I found them. You know where they were? All the employees were surrounding a black person helping him shop. <laughs> what about me, you know? What about Whitey? Man, racism. <laughs> Racism follows me everywhere I go. It's like my shadow. And I'm kind of worried because I think it's starting to rub off on me of all people, me. Again, I was driving and I got cut off by a Mexican driving a BMW SUV. He had these bumper stickers that said things like, Pinchy Aguero and Kill Whitey. <laughs> and that really upset me, you know? How the hell did a Mexican afford a BMW SUV? I'm driving a Ford Escort with a big dent and he's got a BMW SUV. <laughs> that is so gay. All right, I'm Taylor Williamson. Thank you very much. <laughs>